Welcome back, everybody. Got a little bit of a different episode tonight. So we spent most of the day cleaning up the shop, and we did actually move where the RD4 is. It actually used to be over here where this nice oil stain is. And I need to get something to clean that up yet. And we're still leaking over here too. Over at the bench here, Luke Strasser wants to do an oil test on the tar that we pulled out of the rear end. And he also sent me another one to test the engine oil with. So we're gonna fill these up tonight and get them sent on their way so that we can figure out what the oil's like or what it was like and see kind of what they find in it and if there's any major flaws or a lot of metal or anything we should be worried about. All right, with each of these containers filled, this is engine oil to engine oil and trans rear end to transmission rear end. We'll get them sealed up and get them in the mail. And they're gonna have fun with that oil analysis. The engine I feel will come back normal, but just to show you guys kind of how I got the fluid in there. So I have these syringes I keep around. They're great for just such purposes. And I really like them for like filling hydraulic jacks where you have just a little bit, little bitty hole to try and get fluid in. But I'm not putting any pressure on it. That's just running out. That's pressure on that rear end fluid. That is some nasty, nasty stuff. Okay, with the oil fun out of the way, we're gonna jump back into timing gears quick, just to kinda jump on what Squatch 253 was saying. So we believe this to be a replacement for that fiber or pressed fiber gear. And this is a 5B3071. But then I had to pull the cam quick, or the cam gear. And the one he showed in his video shows six holes around here for bolting the two individual pieces together. This is not that way. Now I can't quite get a good reading on that. The split there almost looks like a 5M4239, possibly. But as you can see, this is machined as one piece. This is not the two piece setup like what he showed. So I would be curious when they switch to this or if this was strictly a replacement for that two piece, you know, when Caterpillar had problems with that fiber gear, if this was the fix, so to say, to that problem. So back over to the engine here, as you can see, the cam gear is gone. Yes, Milo. Okay, go away. Go, please. Milo, go. So as we were saying, I did have a video quick of pulling that gear off. It wasn't anything extravagant, it pulled straight off. This is not a tapered shaft, it's just a straight press fit with a keyway. Um, but now that we have that gear out of the way, I'm gonna get these fold over locks out. We'll pull this retainer ring, or if it's just a, I'm not sure if it's just a wear um, retainer or if it actually sets end play for the cam. I would assume it sets end play because this is a, uh, not a straight tooth, but it's a helical cut gear, which means that it's going to have forward or backward motion depending on which way the uh, teeth are cut. But let's get these off and let's get that cam out. But real quick, I'll show you pulling that gear off.
Okay, so now you saw the gear out of there. Let's get these fold over locks out, two bolts, pull that retaining ring. Let's see if we can slide the cam out of this thing tonight. I had to move you guys over here. We're gonna try and slide this out. Check out this front bearing while I have you guys right here. I would say that's well in the realm of reusable. I don't feel any major dings or dents or anything in it. I know there's a little bit of material gone there, but that really doesn't concern me. We're not even down into the copper yet. Over here at the bench. All that grime seems to wipe right off. And now this was the lobe in question. And actually, so this is the lobe itself, the lift lobe. And what we're worried about is the rust here on the inner base circle of the cam. And I'll tell you what, I'm not worried about it anymore. Now that I have it out and can actually look at it, being that the lobe itself, even where the lift starts up in here, since that all looks good, that's where the most pressure is. It's on your lift, up top, and then on your drop back down. And the reason for that is you're compressing your valve spring. When you're riding on your inner base circle, there's virtually no pressure because you should have a gap between the rocker arm and the valve stem or your valve lash. So I am not really worried about this. I feel this will clean up and be just fine. The one right next to it, same story. Got just a little small amount of rust right there on the lift. But I think that will clean up with just some Scotch-Brite. And the rest of the lobes look great. So after about 30 seconds with the emery cloth, that's what we end up with. So you can see there is some pitting there, but I'm not done cleaning that either. And it is still before where we start to lift. We start to lift about right in here. Whereas that rust is quite a ways further down on the lobe next to it. That's, even though it, it's a spot, like you can see the rust, you can barely tell it's there even running a fingernail across it. So a little bit more with the Scotch-Brite might just clean that right up. 
I think we're good to reuse this cam. I'll have to make sure that lifter cleans up all right, but I don't see any major issues. So to keep going with this, I think we need to pull these retainer bolts out. And I'm not sure if that stays with the crank. It seems to be one piece. We'll have to go look in the book here. But then we need to get all these fold over locks off. And that, that is a fold over lock that would make Squatch cringe. Along with the one next to it where they just followed the shape of the bolt. Okay, from what I was able to find, this will stay on the crank, and then this cover should be able to slide out from behind it, I believe. Or at least that's what we're gonna try. Okay guys, with all the fold over locks folded flat, we should be able to go around and pull all the bolts and try and remove this cover. Well everyone, I kind of hit a roadblock here. So this front cover is doweled to the block and I tried driving those dowels into the block like we did on the side covers and these dowels don't want to move so I assume they're going into a blind hole instead of a through hole. And so what I believe has to happen next is I believe the crank needs to drop out and then you can pull this front cover. Now with that being said in order to drop the crank, we need to pull the oil pan. And another thing we need to do to get the uh, crank out is disconnect that clutch. So I'm short on time tonight. We're not going to have time to dive into that clutch. That's going to be a lot bigger project. So I'm going to end the video here. Just know the next one we jump into. If we don't jump back onto the crawler tracks or the track frames, that we'll probably be jumping into that clutch. So thanks everyone for watching. For all those who have subscribed and are following along with this project, I appreciate all the support. We'll see you next time. How am I supposed to get work done if you're right here? That this just doesn't work, Finny.